So, but the risk of actually overrunning, I'm going to go do a quick demo now. So let me go to my, uh, my Cloud Platform Data System. We, uh, we have, where I showed you that, that uh, uh, mind map picture, all that mind map picture is actually, you have the products which you can deploy. Uh, I've got the administrator view here. We can see when a product has been enabled, i.e. it's been installed. We can see when some of the products are, the services are actually part of products, in this case it's sensing. And some of the products, uh, in Mark, uh, MongoDB is another one here. Post SD, Postgres SQL is actually a partner product. It doesn't incur a license, hence it doesn't have the word premium next to it. So we have a wide range of services we can plug in here and we can go in via analytics or dashboards or governance and actually choose them by category. In what we've done is we've organized the, the, the front end to be aligned towards the, uh, the, uh, the collect, organize and analyze part. So in here I've got in collect, I've got my data. So I can see the data that my user can see. So here is a list of my CSV files. Uh, some of them may be data, data, uh, data connections to, to application sources. Um, I can actually add, add assets from a connection. I can point to a data source, so I can add a new data source. I click on here and type some information to, to point to a new data source. Or if I'm actually a person wanting to actually raise a data request, I can actually raise a data request from here, and that can be passed on to a data engineer to actually uh, to satisfy the request. In here, I've also on this uh, my data. I've also got data virtualization here. So in data virtualization. It enables me to relate, reach out to a quite a large number of relational sources and actually start virtualizing those sources uh, and uh, exploiting the push down optimization of those sources. So here on my system, uh, the graphical view, I've got, D I'm reaching out to DB2, I'm reaching out to MySQL uh, DB2 and uh, MySQL. I've, I've also got an Azure source that I, I, just, I took out of this system because I didn't want people to, to start racking up the costs of my uh, my SQL, uh, SQL server running on my Azure service. But in here, I can actually virtualize the table. So when I go and click here, it's going through all my connections and working out what tables I potentially got to view, uh, to, to access. And then I can then, then actually choose to virtualize one of them or two of them. So if each of my sources is now reaching out to actually say, here are all the uh, tables on all of these sources that this source, that this user ID can now actually see. So on here, I can actually then say, I want to do pet sale. And then I can say, I want to add pet sale to my cart. I can view my cart. I haven't been in it for a while. This is a highly virtualized system at the second, so we're running on an ESX server. I can actually, when I've, now I've got this pet sale remote database, which is sitting on, on, on this server. I can assign the assign this virtualized table to a data request. I can put it into a project or I can just add it to my, uh, my virtualized data. I click virtualize. So I am running on a highly virtualized system. And here it is. So actually now I've got a pointer to a database about sitting somewhere in the cloud and I can quickly view my data and uh, I can preview the data to make sure I, I can actually see it. There we are, that's the data. So that's, you know, in one of my customers that would have taken them three months of change request to actually get that access. And then I can actually then start allocating that to a project. I can manage access or I can submit that to the catalog. So that's how quickly it is to connect the data sources. Um, a whole list of all the connections that, that I'm, as I'm an administrator, I can see all the connections on the system. So here, here's the ones I've got created. And these are actually supporting one of the PO, uh, proof of technology events we run. Down here in the, uh, that's collect. Down here in the organized part, we've actually got catalogs. Uh, as one example, so we, we talked about this Watson Knowledge Catalog. So in here, I can actually catalog certain data, data connections. And here I've got a, a CSV file that I've actually got access to. I click in the CSV file. The GUI, let's say we're running on an ESX server shared with lots of people. Because this file's local, locally shared, it can actually pre preview, preview the data. And you'll notice over here, this card number, it's actually recognized this card number might be sensitive. So it's actually automatically applied machine learning rules to filter out to make sure I do not see any sensitive information. And you can create those rules yourself with there's some out of the box. So you can actually start to profile this and then you can decide to add that data source to a project. So the project can actually see the data source. So as a data engineer, I can go and create links to data, upload some data if necessary, 
and then push that data assets or project. So talking about projects, I mean, I've got a whole range of uh, things in Organize here. I can look at data quality of, of, of a certain source. I can actually define categories and business terms. There's a wide range of capabilities there. And I can even look at um, a, a lineage so I can actually understand what's happened to that uh, data asset in its curation process. And coming is also the full data lineage that actually integrates with, if I did an ETL step, what, what happened to that, what happened to that, uh, that lineage. So I mentioned projects several times. So let me look at projects. Most customers I work with have project teams who work in projects. Here is some of the information uh, industry accelerators projects that have been up uploaded. So here's one of the ones I did, uh, did yesterday. Um, so here's the assets, the data assets associated with the project. I have some models, uh, some uh, Python notebooks associated with the project. I've actually uh, been in these and actually run these through yesterday, so I know these will actually work. These are actually building a model, so this is in Python, it could be Scala. It's building a model and actually deploying the model after doing some analyses. It's done some graphics further down here. There it's got some graphics down here and some bar charts. And then it's built a model and actually deployed a model. Once I've actually got that model, I could then say, right, I've, I could deploy it within the platform and actually then monitor the model. But I can then also start within the platform, start to launch our studio. Within our studio, I've got this really nice capability of having shiny apps. So I've already loaded an app. Uh, let me stop the app because I've previously had it running. I can now run, run an app. This app is actually making calls to Cloud Pack for data for the model I've actually just produced to actually start doing something. So I've actually start written, they've written an app as part of the industry accelerators that has links from the Shiny app back into the, uh, the model and the data set sitting on Cloud Pack for data for me to start doing some customer segmentation analysis so I can start clicking into these things to start understanding more about what types of uh, customers are in each segment. As I said, this is all linking, and I can start uh, pointing back to the Cloud Pack for data from different places. So these are all pointing to different, different customers, with, uh, different uh, sources on the Cloud Pack for data and the model we've been produced. And I can start browsing my customer sets and understanding what type of customer that they are, and then start going into more detail and understanding what recreational activities these people might have. So, so what I've tried to show is very, very quickly, you know, in 15 minutes, it's very tight, is to actually show that actually Cloud Platform Data incorpor incorporates capabilities to talk to multiple different sources, you know, Azure, uh, uh, Amazon, Google, IBM, Oracle, Teradata, to actually connect to sources, start incorporating those sources into projects. Then as a project, I could then start to manipulate that data potentially to actually get it ready for a machine learning algorithm. And then I can actually uh, 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 build a model and then deploy the model into the Cloud Pack for data. I can monitor and actually tune the model over time and then incorporate the models into some form of application that actually might visualize the data to my end user community. So all they're doing is using a, a nice front end rather than having to understand anything complex. So that was it. I mean, it, it is a very much a whistle stop tour. Normally, you know, we talk about 90 minutes about Cloud Pack for data and then customers then start to refine into exactly what they want to see. So we see a common pattern for people wanting to do data science projects. We have a, a surprisingly large number of customers who are very interested in data virtualization, particularly with the ability in the product to actually go and to do, to do things like shop, shopping. So you can start to, uh, to, to actually search for things like customer, I search for customer and it gives me a list of where customer exists in the catalog. And I can see whether it's a business term or whether it's a data asset. So I can then go to the data asset and start understanding more about that. And you know, potentially I haven't saved the credentials for this one here, but I could actually sign in my ID and actually start to profile the data and then understand the needs. So the whole idea is to promote self-service access for the business analysts, the data engineers, the data scientists, and even potentially end users. So that was it. It's a lot, lot, there is a lot in the product. Uh, a lot more is coming. We've got a next release on April the 6th currently. So that watch this space.